Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. Friends, there have been some uh, subtle developments in Intelia recently. Uh, I'm not sure if you have uh, taken note of that, so I thought I'll make this video. Um, and it's nothing to be alarmed about, but uh, something to be aware of. Uh, and um, uh, it's uh, potentially it could lead to something like what Verve went through with uh, their Verve 101. Uh, so if you're interested, keep watching. Let's get started. Welcome back friends. Today I want to discuss the recent developments concerning Intelia Therapeutics and its groundbreaking NTLA 2002 therapy. Uh, I also aim to provide you some insight into the broader landscape of genetic medicine and genomic investments. And um, I think Intelia has been um, a trailblazer in the field of uh, genetic medicine, harnessing the power of uh, CRISPR-based technology to develop innovative therapies, targeting a range of uh, genetic disorders. We have always uh, having a look at, been having a look at their pipelines, and uh, we know that they have collaboration with Regeneron as well for uh, at least three candidates and they got two candidates in uh, phase one clinical trial and the others are all in the preclinical stage. Uh, among its promising advancement is the NTLA 2002 therapy designed to address uh, uh, hereditary angioedema, a condition with uh, profound impacts on uh, patients' life. Uh, lives. In uh, June of uh, this year, Intelia announced uh, additional positive interim results from the phase one portion of the ongoing uh, clinical uh, trial studies of NTLA 2002. In the results, across all 10 patients, a 95% mean reduction in monthly attack rate was observed after a single dose of NTLA 2002 uh, through the right through the latest follow-up. So that, in my opinion, friends, is a fantastic um, uh, outcome. However, I must address a recent regulatory development that has uh, drawn attention uh, to some investors. It may be nothing, but I think that it's something worth... Um, having a look at and I'll explain why. The FDA has uh, made a special request on NTLA 2002 therapy and has asked for additional preclinical uh, data related to the therapy's potential effects on the embryological uh, development of a fetus. Specifically, the FDA has focused its attention on the inclusion of female patients of childbearing potential and this has prompted Intelia to make adjustments to its phase two trial plans, ensuring that all concerns are meticulously addressed. In response to this uh, situation, Intelia has taken a proactive approach. The company is actively collaborating with regulatory authorities to conduct the requested uh, preclinical pre pre study and uh, to accommodate the FDA's request. Uh, in the meantime, in order to ensure that the momentum of the research is not halted, the trial's enrollment is progressing smoothly outside the U.S. And uh, the strategic decision made by Intelia underscores its commitment to keep uh, to its schedule while still upholding the highest standards of uh, safety and regulatory compliance. Because at the end of the day, uh, if Intelia doesn't get FDA approval, uh, it doesn't make sense. It has to get FDA approval and it has to uh, give all the information that FDA needs. But it's making sure that uh, the, there is no delay uh, in their clinical trial studies because uh, I think Intelia is confident that they could meet all the requirements of FDA and satisfy FDA and therefore... Uh, not waiting for FDA and continuing with their studies outside of US will be advantageous in the long run and save them a lot of time and efforts. Uh, importantly, I want to clarify that the FDA's request is not uh, centered on the germline editing concerns that have previously been addressed, uh, uh, but instead it pertains to the potential impact of certain components within the therapy's delivery system on embryological development. CEO John Leonard has affirmed, affirmed that the FDA's engagement reflects their careful uh, consideration of the evolving uh, gene editing landscape and their own evolving understanding of uh, gene therapies. FDA is also on a steep learning curve and they have immense responsibilities on their shoulder uh, because once they approve, they are responsible for the outcome worldwide. So. Uh, FDA is being careful. And to provide context, a similar situation arose in the past with Verve Therapeutics. Their therapy, Verve 101, encountered regulatory challenges related to the transmission of edited genes to uh, offspring. 
while such challenges are not uncommon in um, uh, pioneering fields they underscore the complexities that come with uh, gene editing therapies and the importance of regulatory oversight i want to emphasize that intelia's response to the fda hold demonstrates its unwavering commitment to the uh, responsible advancement of genetic medicine while challenges may arise they present opportunities for the growth and refinement it will only make the therapy much better it's important to recognize that regulatory scrutiny is a natural part of the journey in pioneering medical innovations uh, their innovative uh, pipeline extends beyond ntla 2002 encompassing programs like the attr uh, amidolysis therapy ntla 2000 one which is also in uh, phase 1 clinical trial which remains unaffected by the current situation and now i would like to look at some of the fundamental aspects of the company cash and cash equivalents and marketable securities were at 1.1 billion as of june 30 2023 when they reported their q2 uh, 2023 end results and it it compares to 1.3 uh, billion uh, as of december uh, 31 2022 based on its burn rate i estimate that its uh, cash runway may be slightly more than 2 years from now and uh, intel is targeting a study completion date of march 2026 for ntla 2002 so i suspect that there will be equity dilution before monetization unless there is some substantial source of revenue uh, which uh, which could carry the which could extend their cash runway uh, basically their revenue uh, revenue comes from uh, collaboration with regenron and if they tie up with uh, another collaborator that could be another source of uh, potential new source of revenue Intelia stock has been dropping since 28th of January 2021 from a high of 202.59 uh, to close to um, $38.35 as of close on 23rd of August 2023. In the last 4 days Intelia has shown uh, some resilience and a bit of uh, bullishness but both the momentum and MACD are still weak and need to improve uh, significantly in order to show sustained uh, positive uh, development and the extended market has been seeing lot of strength lately and hopefully intelia gets uh, some help uh, from the extended market sentiments let me share some interesting infographics with you Let us start off with the recent insider transactions. Out here you can see a bunch of transactions starting all the way from 3rd of January 2023 up to 2nd of July 2023 and you can see that there has been lot of insider sales some of small amounts like 14000 or uh, or around uh, uh, 42000 but there are quite a few which are bigger like 248000 from the CEO and uh, 93000 uh, from another individual so there are sales so usually insider sales uh, do not uh, generally uh, mean anything negative because many of their insiders get compensated through stock options and they need to share, sell the shares but if you look at the insider trading volume in this uh, screen uh, in the next screen out here uh, you can see that um, there has been uh, insider sales but uh, no insider has bought anything so far so that's that's one of the things to keep in mind and uh, if you were to look at the ownership breakdown you see that the institutional uh, owners uh, own around 85.8% of the shares and um, uh, the general public only has 8.9% of the shares whereas uh, individual insiders have 1.1% so if you look at the situation that we have with dna where there is a lot of insider sales coming in i don't anticipate that i don't anticipate that happening with intelia in that kind of volume that could potentially hurt the share price but instead uh, uh, it's a very small amount of uh, insider holding and only 8.9% so there are a few things that i could think of out here with regard to the um, uh, huge uh, institutional holdings i have a positive as well as negative view i think it's positive because institutional holders are more sophisticated and they have a long term vision they have holding power and they make very uh, uh, thought thoughtful decisions and um, uh, therefore we can say that the share is going to have a lot of stability because the 8.9% uh, uh, in the hands of the general public is not suddenly going to become 25% or 30% uh, so to that extent i feel that it's a positive uh, aspect but on the negative side it can also happen that if an institutional investor decides that the situation is not looking good or if in their overall portfolio they have some compulsion which requires them to uh, reallocate their portfolio Uh, and balance it out uh, then uh, there is a chance that uh, they may unload a huge amount of shares and uh, that could have a big impact on uh, the share price 
all of a sudden so that's the negative aspect uh, of uh, such a heavy institutional holding uh, but that said uh, i would look at the top uh, sh- uh, shareholder to see the quality of the holdings uh, at the very top is arc investment with 10.76% holdings and uh, if you can see here uh, there has been a change of 3.16% in their holding which means they have uh, divested 3.16% so they are slightly less than w- where they were before and still their current value is 365.3 million we have others uh, close behind it is uh, the vanguard group which has increased slightly uh, its holding it has around 9.25% of ownership of shares in intelia then we have blackrock which is again very close to it with 9.1% after that we have regenron which has shown extra confidence in intelia because not only do they hold 4.18% of intelia shares but they have also collaborated with intelia on three therapies so that shows a very strong connection between uh, regenron and intelia and of course then we have straight street uh, uh, global advisors nico asset management and wellington management and t rove price group inc so uh, the the top shareholders uh, institutional shareholders are looking pretty good and um, Uh, so th- that's basically what i would like to say and uh, just before we leave so the the company has around 598 employees at this point of time they have been steadily ramping up their employee count and they are based in uh, massachusetts so in conclusion i would say that um, uh, we should have a a uh, very balanced perspective when we look at intelia uh, the field of gene editing is at the forefront of medical innovation and it's only natural for regulatory agencies to uh, exercise prudence and um, uh, i think that uh, given the cash runway that is uh, um, pretty decent as far as intelia is concerned uh, considering their uh, deep ties with regenron and also the quality of uh, institutional investors who hold intelia stock and also their own approach in this particular instance of continuing to enroll uh, outside of us and keeping the pace and momentum of their uh, clinical trials uh, i think that um, uh, overall they are doing all the right things the only thing we want to make sure uh, is that we hope that they don't get into a uh, any kind of inquiry from uh, fda that leads into a hold for germline edits i don't think that may happen but we had work with that kind of a situation so that i'll just make this video share my uh, share the information i have with you and uh, i would invite you to uh, put in the comments what you think about intelia and whether you have intelia in your portfolio with that i would like to end this video here my friends i'll catch up with you in the next video bye for now